Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you George Brent in Hartzell Spence's One Foot in Heaven on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present a dramatization of One Foot in Heaven by Hartzell Spence. This is a warm and human story about a good man. You know, stories about good people are very often good stories because goodness is really an exciting thing, as we on the Playhouse have often found in our dramatizations of such men as the doctor and the schoolmaster. Tonight, we give you the story of a clergyman, a Methodist preacher who lived and worked in Iowa. Actually, in this book, Mr. Spence is telling the true story of his own father, so it isn't surprising that there's a warm affection in the way he depicts this truly Christian gentleman who, as Mr. Spence says, had one foot in heaven and one foot on God's green earth. We have been fortunate in securing for the starring role that fine actor, Mr. George Brent. And now, Frank Goss, have you a word about Hallmark? There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar, for birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Hartzell Spence's One Foot in Heaven, and starring George Brent. <laughs> Riverton is a Midwestern town, and big city dwellers might call it a small town, but it is listed on any fair-sized map. As our story opens, the morning train from Chicago has just pulled away from the station, leaving a young man and woman alone on the platform. The man looks exactly what he is, a Protestant minister of the Methodist denomination. Well, Hope, what do you think of our new hometown? Well... Do you think it'll be as bad as Bishop Simmons said? The bishop, my dear, is a master at understatement. I am sure it will be considerably worse than he said. Oh, dear. Howdy. Good morning, brother. Is this vehicle for hire? Only one town that is. Uh, you the new preacher? Yes, I'm the Reverend Spence, and this is Mrs. Spence. How do you do? How do you do? Well, climb aboard. I'll take you over to the parsonage. Then I'll take you to the hotel. Well, we weren't planning on going to the hotel. Mm, that's the plan you'll make after you see the parsonage. Step up. And I'll throw your bags in back here. Thank you. Well, get along, Tilly. I, um, I understand there's been quite a turnover in parsons here. Yeah, the Lord sends them and the congregation drives them away. But why? Don't they like the pastors? Can't say. I'm a Presbyterian myself. Never could figure out what the Methodists like. Well, but surely there must be some reason for their attitude. Mm, ever since Preacher Jones passed on, the congregation's been split. Brother Cooper's been running things to suit himself since then. Brother Cooper, eh? Mm. I'll remember that. Oh, you better not cross Brother Cooper. He'll be the one that pays most of your salary. You're being very helpful, brother. Mm, folks just call me Samson. Brother Samson. Any other members of the congregation who uh, uh, the Lord might uh, keep a special eye on? Well, there's Mrs. McClintock. She runs the bakery over there. She and Mrs. Cooper are always fighting about who's going to be head of the ladies' aid. Mrs. McClintock and Mrs. Cooper and the ladies' aid. Make a note of that, my dear. That'll be your department. <laughs> I've been through that kind of battle before. Mm, over yonder is Herb Jellison's. He sells them newfangled automobiles. No good will come of it. Is Brother Jellison one of the ones who engages a great deal in the work of the Lord? Mm, that's a question you'll have to ask yourself, preacher. 
He sings in the choir. Membership's been falling off ever since it started. And I guess most of your flock are good people at heart, even if they are Methodists. Well, thank you, Brother Sampson. You seem to be well informed, uh, even if you are a Presbyterian. <laughs> Bishop Simmons couldn't do this to us, Will. It is a little depressing, isn't it? Well, you have to see for yourself. You ready to go to the hotel? Well, Hope? No. No, Brother Samson. The church seems to be just as old. And if God can live there, I guess we can live here. Thank you, my dear. It won't be for long. Remember why the bishop sent me here. We'll get them to build a new church and a new parsonage. Mm, you may. You're young. Preacher Jones tried it for 11 years before he got so tired he died. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Samson. I'm sorry, Hope. I'll try to make you happy here. I'll be happy, dear. <laughs> as soon as I've recovered my balance. Will you never seem to lose yours? My balance? Yes, dear, your balance. I guess a pastor needs balance more than anything else. Standing with one foot in heaven and the other on God's green earth and unable to plant both feet firmly in either place. <laughs> Sorry to disturb you, Will, but here are Brother Cooper and Brother Jellison, and they would like to speak to you. Good evening, Reverend. Good evening, Pastor. Please be seated, brothers. What can I do for you? I think you've been a little hasty in some of your decisions, Pastor. Like to straighten you out on a few things. Well, I'm in the market for constructive suggestions. Understand you've been organizing a singing group from the children in Sunday school. That's right, and they're coming along very nicely. They'll be ready in a few weeks, Brother Cooper. Ready for what? to take their places in the choir loft. We already have a choir, Pastor. I've been the choir master for five years. I know you have, Brother Jellison. And like all good servants of the Lord, you are due for a reward. I've arranged for the regular choir to take a nice, long rest. The children will take care of the singing. I don't think that would be wise, Reverend. You're new here. Only five months now, isn't it? People in this congregation don't go in much for changes. Well, I've already sounded out the congregation, Brother Cooper. They're all in favor of retiring the present choir. Uh, I'd like to have some of them tell me that. They have told you, Brother Jellison, by their absence from church. Understand you have some ideas about building a new church, Pastor. Yes, I find that God is rather poorly housed here. Well, as treasurer of the church, I don't think the idea is sound. However, I might support it, although it's a big change, providing that there aren't any other changes. Herb's a friend of mine, and I think he's doing a good job. As treasurer of the church, I'm making you a deal. Take it or leave it. Brother Cooper, we're talking about a new church, a new place of worship, a house of God. It will be a gift to God. I do not have the power to make a deal on his behalf. Come on, Cooper. We don't have to take this, even if he is a pastor. You better think it over, Reverend. As treasurer, I'd like to see the choir left as it is. You may not be treasurer for much longer, Brother Cooper. The trustees hold an election next month. I've ordered a closed ballot. I don't think you'll be re-elected. I'm the biggest contributor to this church. God is the biggest contributor in this church. Good day, brothers. The good brothers seem quite angry. Yes. What do you think they'll do? I don't know. I'd rather not think about it anymore at the moment. It's been a trying day, and I'm glad it's over. Will, it isn't over, not quite. One more river. Oh, Heavenly Father, not the ladies' aid again. <laughs> They're meeting in the parlor right now. Mrs. McClinic and Mrs. Cooper are still at it. They both want to be president. Is Mrs. Brooks in there with them? <laughs> yes, sitting there like the sweet old angel she is. Why, dear? Well, maybe with the help of divine providence, we can get this thing settled once and for all. Lead me to the foe and I will slay him or <laughs> her, whatever the case may be. <laughs> Frankly, Mrs. Cooper, I think you've been president long enough. The nominating committee...
has decided that I am the sole candidate, Mrs. McClintock. Two terms is enough for even George Washington. Good evening, and... sisters. Oh, oh, good evening, uh, Pastor. You, uh, you ladies seem to be having some difficulty. We want a new president. She means she wants to be president. I was nominated. Oh, yes, you picked your own nominating now, committee. Now, 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 sisters. No. Well, I, I know you've been fighting, and I came over because I enjoy your display of spirit. The Bible is full of battles, but the wars that they were successful were the ones the children of God fought together against a common foe. Now, you ladies are doing a great work for this church. I would hate to see that work interrupted. I suggest that we change procedure a trifle and accept open nominations from the floor so that both of you ladies can prove you haven't your personal interests at heart. Any objections? Well, I don't... Sure. I, I would like to put in nomination the name of Mrs. Hazel Brooks. Will you second that, Mrs. Cooper? Uh, second. And now I move that nominations be closed. And I'm sure Mrs. McClintock will second that. Uh, second? Well, now, since... Since Mrs. Brooks is the only candidate, I, I guess she is elected by acclamation. I uh, won't keep you ladies any longer. Will, you've been disturbed lately. Something's wrong. What is it? Oh, the district conference is being held in Detroit at the end of the month, and... Bishop Simmons has invited me to deliver the sermon. He picked you out of the 300 pastors who'll attend. Why, Will, that's a great honor. It's more than that. I think it's been engineered. What do you mean? Cooper and Jellison and the others. They're going to the conference as lay delegates. They'll bring charges against me and attempt to have me move. But they have nothing to charge you with. Oh, they'll attack my sermon. Any sermon is open to attack. They can take some isolated line, twist the meaning, give it a different interpretation, and... Try to influence the bishop. But the bishop is very fond of you. Yes, but I haven't succeeded in getting the new church started, and I, I like it here, Hope. And I hope the bishop is in agreement with my sermon. I, I wouldn't want to be moved without completing the job. I wouldn't want to move either just now. You like them too, don't you? The parishioners. Very much, but it, it's more than that. You see, Will, we're going to have a baby. In a moment, James Hilton will return to present Act Two of Hartzell Spence's One Foot in Heaven, starring George Brent. There's a new way to bring joy to children this Easter. This year, you can give Hallmark Little Women dolls. You know how much children love the book, Little Women, by Louisa May Alcott? You know how youngsters love the movie stars? And you know what dolls mean to children. Well, the new Hallmark dolls combine all these loves of childhood. The famous movie stars in the new movie, Little Women, posed for Hallmark dolls, and each autographed the doll whose part she played. Imagine the thrill of some child you know when she receives a Hallmark doll of Margaret O'Brien as Beth, or Elizabeth Taylor as Amy, or Janet Lee as Meg, or June Allison as Joe. Each doll stands up by itself, eight inches high, and has a delightful verse that tells all about her. And they all wear gorgeous costumes of rich colors with real feather plumes in their hats. Think what happy hours some little friend of yours can have acting out little women with Hallmark dolls. You can mail them as easily as greeting cards, and they cost only 25 cents each. Or for a really enchanting present for Easter, or for birthdays or any other occasion, give the entire set of four dolls in a colorful permanent portfolio. It costs only one dollar. It will bring you joy this Easter to see the rapture on a child's face when the portfolio is opened and out come Meg, Amy, Joe, and Beth, the lovable Hallmark Little Women dolls. Now back to our play starring George Brent, who appears through the courtesy of RKO Pictures. RKO's current picture is The Setup, starring Robert Ryan and Audrey Totter. Now here is James Hilton in the second act of One Foot in Heaven, starring George Brent. As we open the second act of the Hallmark Playhouse, the Reverend William Spence has just stepped from the pulpit 
after delivering a sermon before the District Conference of the Methodist Church held in Detroit under the supervision of Bishop Simmons. As the pastor takes his seat, Brother Cooper, a lay delegate, opens the attack. <laughs> If it please, Bishop Simmons, I ask that a business meeting be convened at once to deliberate a matter that cannot wait. I am Brother Cooper, a lay delegate from the Riverton Parish. I will hear the matter. You may continue. Thank you, Bishop Simmons. For some time, we in Riverton have felt that our pastor, the Reverend Spence, is not competent. I would hesitate to make such a charge under normal circumstances, but I do so now because of the sermon you have just heard with your own ears. Are you ready to defend your sermon, Brother Spence? My sermon needs no defense, Bishop. Uh, Bishop Simmons, I want to add my protest to that of Brother Cooper. I am Brother Jellison, also of the Riverton Parish. You have just heard our pastor say that his sermon needs no defense. That is his attitude. He thinks himself infallible. I did not say that I'm infallible, Brother Jellison. We were not discussing me. We were discussing the sermon. All right. Sit down, Jellison. I can handle this. We'll stick to the sermon. Please do. It's such a beautiful sermon. A beautiful sermon. Bishop Simmons, the ego of this man is incredible. Uh, your conduct is rather unbecoming, Brother Spence. But, Bishop, the sermon is a heavenly work of art. It is, is it? It's full of holes like a sieve. I can rip it apart every word of it. How could a man of God write such a sermon? I can't answer that, Brother Cooper. You'd better address that question to British Simmons. Uh, you can't answer my question, can you? No, I can't. You see, a great occasion like this calls for a great sermon. I would not have been content with my own humble efforts, so I borrowed my sermon from this book, word for word. That's why I think the sermon was so wonderful. It was written many years ago by a missionary, a missionary who rose to be a bishop, our own bishop, Bishop Simmons. <laughs> You sure slick, Brother Cooper. Everybody in town's talking about it, too. The bishop's own sermon. <laughs> well, I didn't think Brother Cooper would let the story get around. Oh, there was others up to the conference aside from him and that, that automobile maniac, Jellison. Uh, some of your flock knew you was in trouble, and they was there in the audience are rooting for you. Those good people. Thank you, Samson. Uh, shucks, don't thank me. I I'm a Presbyterian. <laughs> You're a good man. That's what counts. I'm going to need my good people for what I want to do. Still got that new church in the craw? Yes, I'm going to hold a revival meeting. Mm, takes a lot of folks to contribute to building the church. I know, but when we get started, maybe Cooper and Jellison will see the light. I'm going to need them. They're the wealthiest people in my congregation. Mm, don't know how to break this to you, Pastor, but they uh, ain't in your congregation no more. They're too mad. They came over to my church. They're uh, Presbyterians now, like me. Oh, I see. Well, Samson, so long as they haven't left God's family. Mm, here's the parsonage. Whoa, Tilly. Here's the usual 25 cents, Samson. Mm, thanks, preacher. And uh, here's a dollar change. But I... I only gave you a quarter. Oh, put that dollar toward the new Methodist church, Pastor. Only remember that it was a Presbyterian who started it. <laughs> Gentlemen, know I've been planning a revival in my church. My field workers have visited every home within an area of ten miles, and they have compiled these lists. They include the names of all people who do not attend church regularly. Uh, not all of them are Methodists. So I want each of you to have the list of people of your own denomination. Father Flannery, this list is yours. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Rabbi Fine, these are your people. Thank you. I should have done this myself. You would have if you'd had the problems my church has had. Don't feel embarrassed. I'm embarrassed that I was forced to make the move. Uh, you have a list left over. I take it that is mine. Right you are, Reverend Moore, and 
Thank you for your time. Uh, Reverend Spence, one of my parochial school children tells me you bought a chance on my St. Bernard dog. The one that's uh, being raffled off. You raffle them off every month, and I buy a ticket every month. I'd uh, love to win them, Father Flannery. No, oh, you know the cost, Pastor. <laughs> Whenever one of my parishioners win them, they feed them, bathe them, and give them back to me. <laughs> uh, uh, Pastor, there's something I want to give back to you. What is that, Reverend Moore? A couple of misplaced Methodists who are trying to convince themselves that they're Presbyterians. <laughs> Uh, Brother Cooper and Brother Jellison, they belong on your list. Thank you, Reverend. Well, preacher, it sure looks like to stretch my dollar a long way. Gonna be a humdinger of a church. Never thought you'd be able to do it without the help of Cooper and Jellison. Well, I got the help I needed from a somewhat higher level, Samson. Yeah, but uh, you're a practical man, too. Would have been mighty handy if they'd have kicked in with contributions. I can't deny that. The church will be completed, but I'm afraid the organ and the bells will have to wait. When are they going to get this work finished? At a wonderful time, Samson. Our first services will be held here on Easter Sunday. Bishop Simmons is coming down for the dedication. You've done a wonderful job, Brother Spence. I had the feeling that you were the man to do it. But now I, I have a difficult task difficult task? Yes. You see, you're a builder. A builder of churches and a builder of faith. You were the spiritual conductor between God and man. And so I have to take you away from here because your work here is done and others can now take it over. I need you in another place. There is a parish much like this one was in Nebraska. Will you go? Yes. Only my wife, well, we're expecting the baby shortly. And hardly know how to tell her. I didn't want to leave you that task. I told Sister Spence myself. What did she say? She is of the opinion that babies have been born in Nebraska before. Sister Spence is a fine woman. The best, Bishop. The very best. Oh, Will, Bishop, come quickly. What's wrong, my dear? A truck from Chicago. It has bells and a new organ. Bishop, where did they come from? The truckman didn't know, but they're paid for. The Lord be praised for that. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Cooper. Keep up the good work with the ladies' aid. Oh, I will. I will. And thank you. Thank you. And God bless you. God bless all of you. I, I'm glad they're all gone, Will. I think I... I think I'm going to cry. Uh, all of them aren't gone. Here come a couple of brothers who stayed to do a little overtime praying. Hello, Pastor. I liked your sermon, Reverend Spence. Brother Cooper and Brother Jealous and I. I'm so glad to see you. Pastor, I've been sort of a, a... Well, it's a word I shouldn't use in church. Me too. Same word. <laughs> the organ and the bells, and you gave them, didn't you? The organ from me, the bells from Herb. Pastor, why do you have to leave us? The being that counts in this church never leaves it, brother. He'll welcome you any time. I think Brother Jellison has something on his mind. Uh, uh, Pastor, uh, Brother Cooper and I, well, uh, we want you to have this. A key? What is it for? Uh, it's out here. Uh, there. Uh, 
Ain't it a beauty? Why, Will, it's an automobile. Yes, from me and Brother Cooper. I, brothers, good brothers. <laughs> Something wrong with the motor? No. Before we drop over the hill, I... I just wanted to take one look back. Yes, Will. Riverton. Beautiful, isn't it? There's the steeple in the church. Birds have already started nesting there. And there's old Samson's rig down by the station, waiting for the morning train. Mrs. McClintock's bakery. Jellison's garage. And the flowers in Mrs. Brooks' garden. Hmm. And there's somebody bringing Father Flannery's dog back to him. I wish every man in the world could see this town from here as I see it now. People are forever asking a preacher what heaven is like. I guess maybe it's just like a town. Because a town is like the people in it. That's why I can leave them now. Because we'll see these good people again. Yes, we'll see them again. moment, James Hilton and George Brent will return. But now, here's what I promise to tell you about Hallmark Little Women Dolls, the newest addition to the famous Hallmark Doll Collection. Little Women Dolls are in full-color costume with real feather plumes in their hats. They're eight inches high and stand up all by themselves. Each doll has a clever verse that tells all about her and is autographed by the star who played her part in the popular movie Little Women. Hallmark Little Women Dolls are only 25 cents each, or it's a dollar for the entire set of four in a colorful permanent portfolio. Buy Hallmark Little Women dolls at the Friendly Store, where you find Hallmark greeting cards. Some little friend will love you for them. Here again is James Hilton. Thank you, George Brent, for a performance both spirited and inspiring. It has certainly come with timeliness this week, and I'd like you to know how happy we've been to have you here with us. It's been a pleasure for me too, Mr. Hilton. I can see there's a very friendly feeling about your Hallmark Playhouse. Now, that doesn't really surprise me, because... I know how your Hallmark cards seek to spread that feeling wherever they go. And thank you again for having me. I hope we shall have you again. And by the way, you might listen to us next Thursday when we present Christopher Morley's Kitty Foyle starring June Allison. And the following week, Betty Smith's famous novel, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, starring Dan Daly. And after that, James Thurber's great baseball story called You Could Look It Up, starring William Frawley. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was written by Joel Murcott. So until next Thursday then, this is James Hilton saying good night. May I add a word, Mr. Hilton, and a message to all of our listeners? There is no better Easter gift than the new Hallmark Little Women dolls. See them while you are choosing your Hallmark Easter cards. Now on display at the Friendly Store where you buy your Hallmark cards. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. (laughs) This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all and inviting you next Thursday and every Thursday to tune in one half hour earlier and listen to the adventures of Casey, crime photographer, followed by the Hallmark Playhouse. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.